a love story amid massive migration and displacement. Exit West is the new novel by Mohsin Hamid, the celebrated and award-winning author of best-selling novels The Reluctant Fundamentalist and Moth Smoke, among others. And he joins us now to discuss Exit West. Welcome, Mohsin. So great to have you here. Thank you. How did you choose the refugee experience, the migrant experience, as the subject of your latest novel? I moved back from London to Pakistan seven years ago. And when I left London, I had this feeling that uh, there was this big backlash against migrants in general. But arriving in Pakistan, almost everybody was telling me, you know, why have you come back? We want to leave. And I felt the tension between those two things, people who wanted to leave and those who didn't want them to come. And so the novel came from that. And got, it got you thinking about that. Now, you choose to tell the story through a young couple. My heart goes out to them because here they are, just barely falling in love, listening to music, going to cafes. And before their young love even has a chance to cement, their city is thrown into civil war. And I feel like they are sort of thrown together in a way that they might not have been had life sort of unfolded more gently for them, right? They're yeah. all of a sudden, you know, they are. Why did you choose to tell the story through the eyes of young lovers? Well, um, because people are people. Yeah. And so, so often we think, oh, the refugee or the migrant is, you know, some other kind of thing. But, you know, your life gets interrupted. There you were in whatever city you were in, living the way people live. And all of a sudden events occur. And it gives, um, it gives a sort of drama to the romance also, in a sense, when we meet somebody and we know we can't be together, it, it feels incredibly more potent, at least for a while. Absolutely, and they certainly have a very potent beginning to their relationship. Why, when you are illustrating the migrant experience in this book, did you choose to skip over the passages, which can be so perilous and dangerous? Well, um, it's the passage that makes us feel migrants are different from us. You know, I haven't crossed the Mediterranean in a small boat. I haven't swum across the Rio Grande. Um, but that's a tiny part of the migrant experience. Mostly it's what made you leave home and leave all those people you love behind, which is an enormous sadness, really. And then what happens to you when you arrive? And I wanted to focus on those two parts, which I think are more universal. Well, it's so um, important that you point out how universal this is, because I think the migrant experience, so many people think, oh, it happens to other people, but it is absolutely universal. It happened to my mother. She yes. had to leave Cuba when she was 14 because of the revolution. It's happened, I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a single person who doesn't have a story of migration or of some refugee status in their family history. It, absolutely, we've all migrated. Human, yeah. human beings didn't evolve in North America. We've all come from somewhere. But also, we migrate through time. So if you've been in New York for 80 years, uh, the city has completely changed. In the 30 years that I've known it, it's completely changed. Uh, places change. People, people see the world around them change even when they stay still. Absolutely. Now, how did you um, develop the device of the magic door, the portal, as it were, that doesn't take you to Narnia, but it takes you to somewhere else on the globe? Well, it felt like technology has already done that. So I was probably Skyping with somebody from Pakistan, and they were sitting in Stockholm or New York, and it looked like looking through a window. And I feel that geography has collapsed. In our technological world, um, we are being thrown together with people from all over the place. We can roam the world on our phones, on our computers. And so the doors are really something that already exists sort of emotionally. Um, and uh, I just bent physics a little bit to make them happen. Uh, in the world. It was fascinating, absolutely. You do write about the experiences in the camps, however. Uh, what, how would you characterize the welcome that many of these refugees found in the new places they discovered themselves in? Well, they, they found people alarmed yeah. that they were coming, and that's natural, too. Um, it's, it's, I think, entirely reasonable for people to be frightened of migrants. Um, but in the same way that we might be frightened of somebody of a different race or a different background, uh, it's, it's worth examining why we're frightened instead of thinking that that's the correct response. Right. So say the Nadia keep meeting people who are frightened by them, but they also find lots of kindness and openness as well. Oh, yes, there are many instances of, of kindness which are also displayed. Now, I understand that you are also a father. Yes. And I find that in the book there are many moments that were very astute. Parenthood is very astutely described. Do you find that your writing has changed at all since you've become a parent? It's changed a lot, actually. Um, I'm the middle generation now. Uh, we live next door to my parents, and so every day my kids go and play with their grandparents, and that's how I grew up as well. And living in that way, uh, observing one up and one down, it does feel very different from when I was younger. Right, absolutely. And so you, you, know, you were born in Lahore, 
educated at Princeton and Harvard, and at this point have spent as much time in the West yeah. as anywhere else, correct? So are your experiences reflected in your writing? Yeah, I mean, I'm a migrant. I've yeah. been a migrant my whole life, and I'm also a mongrel. You know, I'm part American, a bit British, you know, right. half Pakistani. And I think in this moment in time, there's a real desire in so many countries for political purity. Like, you know, are you really Pakistani enough? Are you really American enough? And it's interesting that it's not happening just in the US or in Europe, but in places like Pakistan too, that so many of these extremist groups are not really seeing their conflict fundamentally with the West, but between, with Muslims that they think are westernized. Right. And that's happening everywhere. So how do you think we're going to resolve this current situation we see ourselves in, which is one that, while we're having unprecedented migration, we're also seeing so many countries turn inward and sort of seemingly reject a notion of globalism. How will this be resolved, do you think? We have to be less frightened. Yeah. I think, you know, actually the world is becoming a better place. There are more calories for people. The gap between women and men is narrowing. Um, uh, there's less death through violence. Uh, but we've somehow managed to feel like things are getting much, much worse. And so I think imagining a new optimistic future is the way forward. Uh, America is proof that if you allow migration to occur, wonderful things can happen. There's no reason to think that that stopped now. It'll keep going. Very, very interesting. Now, I'm just curious. I know that in the past you also had a day job at McKinsey. Have you stopped that now? Are you writing full time? <laughs> yeah, I, I used to work at McKinsey and uh, I had a gig where they let me take three, four months off to write. Um, I do consult a bit from time to time. And, and it's funny because as a novelist, I live sort of in a room, uh, you know, by myself. And I like to pop out and go around the world. And so, so I enjoy that. You appreciate those moments of, in the office, <laughs> around the, the water world. cooler, yeah, right? Yeah. I, exactly. And, yeah. and just popping into, you know, a company or an environment far away. And, and seeing what their world is about. It's, it's another way of traveling, really, and I, I enjoy it. Uh, Mohsen Hamid, thank you so much for coming to talk to us today. Thank you. Congra congratulations on a beautiful novel. Thank you.